if you head on over to the front page of TFNN, you'll see right there under featured content, the Tiger Forex report by Teddy Kegstat. Teddy launching a brand new Forex report, folks, in the last couple weeks. He's got a new issue out this week as well, second issue out there. You can sign up for this month alone, folks, okay? So this special only runs through July. You can basically become a charter inaugural member in Teddy's newsletter, the Tiger Forex report. You can get that, folks, at 25% off forever. You lock in that number of 25% off the $97 price. That gets you, I believe, to $72.75. I got to do that number uh, and we will get it done. But nonetheless, let's talk to our man, Teddy, because man, we got some action going on today. Teddy Kegstack, good morning. We certainly do. How's it going, Tommy? It's going great, man. How was your 4th of July? Uh, 4th of July was great. And then uh, the markets opened up yesterday. And what a really explosive start to uh, July in the third quarter. Oof, uh, I don't know where you want to kick it off, man. We got some action in crew. We got some action in the currencies. Uh, I'll tell you this, though, before we do, I got so I have many friends, Teddy. One of my best friends right now lives in Switzerland, um, moved over there to work for J.P. Morgan from Staten Island, New York. But so we're always talking a little bit of Europe action. And uh, some of my friends, they already got trips planned to Rome right now. And they're talking about, of course, they are uh, where the euro is, where the dollar is. Pretty remarkable moves. If maybe we kick it off there. Um, yeah, well, here's the interesting thing that happened over the past two days. Um, obviously, you're, you're aware of the oil sell-off. Uh, the bonds yes. have rallied huge, and the 10 years yes. rallied very huge over the last two sessions. I mean, to open up like two handles higher on a, on a you know a day following a three-day holiday weekend is pretty explosive with no news. And also, to complement that, we've had a huge dollar rally across the board from basically Sunday night through um, yesterday. Now, it, there's this is divergence. Everything this is it's going to be very interesting to see how this pans out now. Okay, because the bonds making. I mean, you have all these. Everyone's starting to hear about recession. Okay, because now the Fed and the economists are starting. They can't deny the fact that we just haven't hit that three quarter mark or whatever four quarter mark of certain numbers hitting whatever you know. But the reality is, we all know where we're at. You know, so I think it's. You got to be very mindful of what's going on today. I mean, the euro, anyone that reads the Forex report, we hit our downside target today. I went through it by a couple of pips. Um, that's key support right now. We're getting close to parity in the euro, you know, and the U.S. dollar Swiss is starting to gain momentum back to the upside. And I think you really have to pay attention to the fact that some of these strong currencies, they're getting very, very weak, you know. And I think that what we're seeing right now is this little choppy period before we start to regain our trends. Um, the bond market is the very interesting part that I think is amazing because you have an accelerating dollar strength with a decrease in interest rates, you know, short term. So I yeah. think that's going to cause a lot of backlash. And I think we're going to see some really wild swings. Like if you look at the U.S. dollar Swiss chart, how it's looked over the past month and a half, two months, that's an incredible amount of volatility, yeah. you know, for that kind of a market. I would expect that we're going to see more of that kind of stuff moving into August. And can you walk through maybe the listeners and viewers through, Teddy, because you've talked about it before, just how kind of some of those markets are shaped by some of the demand in terms of basically, you know, could, cons whether it's traders, consumers, whoever you are in the market, you're searching out higher yield, right? You're going after demand, kind of in the same way the crude ties in. So can you walk them through just the fundamental aspect of, of what you just said there in terms of you have higher uh, interest rates, no, excuse me, you have lower interest rates lower interest at rate. the same time that you have the dollar actually moving higher and how that's contradictory right. in the long run yes. usually? Yes, absolutely. And the thing is, it's not that it, at any given day they can counterbalance and go against each other. They don't, they don't just trade in tandem tick for tick. However, when you have this kind of explosive momentum, like I said, like where you have the treasury bonds and the 10 years up, two basis handles, you know, you have the dollar index that's exploded to new highs over the past two days, you know, that is a contrary move. Those are, that's a rubber band being stretched. So the question is, is when it comes back, which one is going to get the, the trend back? Now, nice. I don't see, I don't see the interest rate. I mean, we at the Fed minutes coming up today. I don't yeah. see any type of speak coming that they're going to say, oh, well, there's rumors of a recession looming around the corner. Maybe we're going to put the brakes on raising interest rates. 
I don't see that happening. I mean, something like that would cause a shockwave today for sure. And obviously set some new trends possibly, but I don't see that kind of speak coming out of uh, anywhere from the Fed whatsoever. And I think after we get through today, we gotta remember we're coming off a three day holiday market. There's a lot of opportunity in arbitrage to swing. The algos are kicking up. You have no retail traders. You have very thin pockets of volume. You have vacuum moves. Like I remember uh, for people who aren't from the trading floor, you know how like when they go hunting for stops, you know, there's always a little liquidity everywhere in the market, especially in a trading pit. But once you hit that one pocket where there's a whole bunch of resting orders, whether they're counter trend, you know, people bailing or getting in, you know, that's when you have really erratic moves, you know, and especially in holiday markets, those pockets stretch. So it's very easy, especially in an electronic world for markets to overtrade. And I think we have to be very careful of the fact that over the past two days, especially, we may have seen the markets overtrade and they're going to snap back to that somewhere to their equilibrium. Yeah, it's a great point for sure. Uh, and so so let's let's jump to crude since we've been talking about mm -hmm. crude for a while. Um, maybe give the listeners or what your look is for crude because we're we're down at some pretty important levels of under a hundred bucks, right? We're approaching. I was just mm -hmm. talking about it. Whether it's the lows we had from May, uh, what do we have? A low of ninety eight twenty. I got on my chart. We're at ninety eight twelve right now in that crude talk contract. What are you looking for in crude in the coming near term? Um, well, it's definitely quite a nice sell-off. I mean, I'm so upset I bought gas on Sunday. I should have waited till today. <laughs> Literally 15 Ten bucks in that price of a barrel. Right. Seriously. So, um, but I think it's just grinding its lows. I, I think it's it's trying to find its bottom. You know, I mean, there's it's all because of the word recession that's now getting headlines. You know, before it was the news saying, you know, are we in a recession? In a recession? Is the Fed going to say anything about it? You know, and people like us have been talking about it, but it wasn't confirmed if you will. Now that sure. you have somewhat of a confirmation coming out, I think it's a news driven slide. Okay. And you got to look at it. This is right in front of where their curb, you know, Russia is still supplying oil to certain parts of the world. They just put it out over the weekend. They want to put the clamp down so that Russia can't deliver any oil anywhere in the world, period. You know, so yes. what does that do to supply? Do you think that oil is going to go down to 90 or 80 bucks when we squeeze the last bit of oil being released from Russia? Yeah, that's not going to happen. You know, and I think that this is that friction point where we're going to the downside. And I think you're, you know, there's also a delivery nature too. You know, as far as supplies too. And I think that that's going as that demand increases for the fall and the winter time. You're going to start to see once again the market get bit up as well. Yeah, and back to Chairman Powell, I, I would pretty much agree with what you said in terms of you know they're on a course right now, and they took a lot of heat early on saying that they weren't going to hike. Right. Until mm -hmm. they saw absolute data that they needed to. And that turned out to be a big mistake. But they're probably going to do the same thing here, saying, listen, we are going to hike now and we're not going to pause hiking until we see concrete data that inflation is behind us. And I at least feel that and I know you probably agree that inflation I'm is not behind us with you, Tom. by the data for sure because you need a real trend here folks you know you need a real reversal not that you have you know a pause in some numbers not that you have some waning demand um right because they they got right. a lot of work to do well teddy yeah. thank you so much man and we we look forward to talking to you next week man and we appreciate Thanks, the time um, as always and by the way i wear crocs and i even wear socks with crocs <laughs> they rock it man whatever makes you happy rock it we'll get you on with, <laughs> with our man kevin as well thanks teddy we'll talk to you next week stay tuned folks we'll be right back